Hello and welcome to the One Life Church devotional series where we cover the entire Bible in 20 months. Well, today's chapters are 1 Corinthians chapter 10 and 2 Samuel 13, where we get introduced to David's family. Now, David was a great military leader. He was the most famous king Israel has ever had. But family man, he had issues. And it's because I think it began with him taking multiple wives, not being content with God's plan for one woman and one man for the rest of their lives. And so he brought into his family women with their religious beliefs, their cultural preferences. It brought multiple children who competed against each other, who had a father who neglected them, and there were issues. This chapter is absolutely shocking. Incense, rape, murder amongst his kids. Amnon, one of his boys, started to lust after one of his stepsisters. So now, instead of going to his father, instead of getting goodly, godly counsel, instead of going to the Lord, he goes to a counselor called Jonadab, who encourages him to hatch this plan where he pretends to be sick. Ask the father, please send my sister to come and bake food for me. I'm so sick. And then chase everybody out the room and rape her. Horrific. We see the pain of an abused woman. We see the shame in the household. Dad throws a tantrum but does nothing. And the brothers, the biological brothers of the half-sister, have revenge in their hearts. And two years later, Absalom decides to take matters into his own hands. Dad didn't sort it out. I'm going to sort it out. So he calls all the brothers to a feast, gets them stone drunk, and then he kills or gets his brother killed. Well, Absalom has to flee the country because now he's a murderer. And it says at the very end of the chapter that David began to long for Absalom. It says here, verse 38, After Absalom fled and went to Geshur, he stayed there for three years, and King David longed for Absalom. What's the story? What's the message we get out of this story? Well, David was soft on his household. He didn't discipline his boys. He says he got angry at the rape, but he didn't, there were no consequences. His boys were fulfilling priestly functions. They weren't even going out to war. And in addition, we see that David's sin seems to have been multiplied in his kids. So David has an affair with Bathsheba. His boys do much worse, rape and incense. David doesn't handle his own sin. And so he doesn't attend to the sin of his, his boys. And they do much worse. They, they commit horrific murder within the family. No, no sin is an important issue. And it, God's got a way for us to deal with it. And so 1 Corinthians chapter 10 picks up this theme, actually saying, you know, the Old Testament, the Israelites were a picture for us today. And, you know, there are stories in the Old Testament where sin is exposed and you know, their sin is judged. And it serves as a lesson for us today, whether it's the snakes killing people or, you know, the fire killing people, etc., etc. Uh, sin is, is, is a bad thing. Uh, lust unattended to is a bad thing. Adultery, a bad thing. Uh, violence, a bad thing. Abuse against women, a shocking thing. And and we need to attend to our hearts because our hearts are capable of these things. So verse 12 says, So if you think that you are standing firm, be careful that you don't fall. No temptation has overtaken us except that was common to man. Everybody gets tempted. But listen, God is faithful, the next verse says. So our victory over our own sin, our victory over temptation is not because we're strong. It's because God is faithful and he will not let you be tempted beyond what you can bear you think you're at cracking point no 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 you're not god says you can bear it and when you're tempted he will provide a way out an exit i like to look at it this way when i'm walking down the corridor of life when i am tempted by something the first thing i go to is this verse 1 corinthians chapter 10 verse 13 there is an exit door. Show me, Lord, please show me the exit door. Where can I run? Where can I go? I know I'm not going to be tempted what, we are, what, I, what I can bear. And I know you've given me an exit. Isn't that incredible encouragement? Not only have we got the spirit of God to help us say no to ungodliness, but we have an exit. Then this chapter moves on to our, our liberty moves away from sin, saying, look, the expression of your freedom and your liberty. And what uh, Paul does here, he introduces us to a food market. Now, you might be wondering why I'm 
parked in a car here on the side of the road because I'm outside one of the most famous food markets in Cape Town. This is Oranya Sikh Market. This road has cars as far as the eye can see on a Saturday and a Sunday morning. And what people are encouraged to do is to go into those little booths there. It's got a magnificent view over the ocean. And this is one of the culinary landmarks of the Western Cape. You can sit in that food market and you can basically eat anything fresh off the sea, out from the farm. And this is what Paul says in verse 25. Eat anything sold in the food market without raising matter of conscience.